and welcome to the 3D Code Experience. My name is John Pennington. Um, working together with the Cubify Fans Blogspot. Uh, Tom Meeks is the author there. Um, and we're basically journaling, video journaling, um, my experiences with 3D Code. Um, these are kind of random because these are basically me learning 3D Code and sharing it as I learn it. Um, the next series that we're going to work together in collaboration with Cubify fans is going to be a little more in depth of actually learning the tools themselves. So right now the 3D code experience is just that. It is it is my experience in 3D code. Okay. Um, I do apologize. It's been a while since my last video and that had uh, some reasons. I'm going to detail that in the blog rather than take up time in the video. So please read the blog if you're curious as to what took us so long to get to this place. Um, what we're going to do here in this one is we're going to uh, start with um, the um, excuse me. We're going to start with the uh, project we had just last worked on. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my workspace is the same as it normally is. So I've reloaded my tutorial workspace. Okay. And so I'm going to go over here, File, Open Recent, and that'll be the Hobby Horse, which we just did. Now, after I left you in the video, um, I added some handles and some eyes to kind of round off this uh, this horse. I was going to do some embellishments on the saddle, and I just thought it kind of looked better simple, so I'm going to leave it simple. What we're going to do here today, though, is we're going to uh, add some texture to this. And... Uh, I'm going to uh, show you some things now we could we could put texture by just grabbing the paintbrush and painting over here and that's fine if that's all we want to do is color things okay but when you really get into the depth of 3d modeling um, you want to you want to use the full features of the renderer and you want to use some uh, some uh, some detailing and some shadowing so um, not sure why that backing up caused me to lose some tools up there and I don't don't fully comprehend it I've noticed that a couple times in in practice so um, and I'll show you what I've lost but it's important to me that I get them back so I'm gonna go new don't save see these tools up here these are very important tools for what I'm about to show you so I'm gonna go back to this I'm gonna open up uh, my uh, my hobby horse. I'm gonna go back to paint. And you see those tools are up there and I did not remove them. All I did was use the control Z to um, to remove the the steps that I made. Okay so now what we're gonna talk about right now is what's called smart materials and these are over here in your uh, resources. So click on smart materials if it's not already highlighted. Uh, I like to start off with default when I'm showing this to people. You got a whole array. I've got these um, thumbnails big. I like big things uh, for visual reasons. Uh, I'm going to move it over here and uh, kind of look through it. Now these are all samples of what that particular object would look like if those um, smart materials were applied to those shapes. Like right down here on the bottom, this one called Plastic Shabby. I'm going to click on it. I'll get a preview window. And when my mouse is not in the window, it shows you a sample of what the object you're working on looks like rendered with that new smart material. That is so cool. To me, that is just awesome because that's exactly uh, what you want. Now, all you got to do is go over here and fill whole layer. And that's applied. And you close that and now you see it and you could actually go to the render and you can see it the interesting thing is when you render uh, or when you apply a smart material you actually start to see I like to call these chatter marks because that's what they would have been if you were really working in wood and you can see some of the stuff that would need to be smoothed down a little bit more okay now let's see if these things disappear when I undo control Z and they did so let's go back to new don't save. Not sure why that's doing that. Um, we'll need to uh, turn that in as a uh, obvious bug, uh, or we'll find out why we're doing it. But for now, uh, we're gonna just do what I just did to gets me back in there, and you see they come right back. So, if you lose those tools, um, Control Z, the um, that's just 
something that you're gonna you're gonna have to figure out how to get them back up there alrighty so got my materials over here I'm gonna go to the wood ones alright and I'm not gonna apply these but I want you to see some of these okay I'm clicking on this one right here which is called wood two dark edges that's a pretty nice one I like the wood um, there's some things we're going to need to do to make our horse look correctly because if you were to build this a carpenter or a woodworker who's making an object like this would not have all the grain on every part going the same direction he would use the grain for strength so obviously when we're going to um, detail this we want it to look um, much like what uh, what it would be if it was actually being created now you can go up here to these things which these sliders and you've got depth right now it's at 50 percent and if you look that's that grain looks pretty strong in there I'm gonna take us down to say 20 ish and so that helps back it off a little bit you've got opacity and you've got a uh, gloss intensity like if you're if you're using material and it's looking too much like glass and you want it to look more like uh, um, say cloth you want to remove some of that gloss okay now what I've done is is and I haven't applied this because you can tell when you move the mouse in here nothing's done is I've I've created my own wood shader and that's this one right here and I'm gonna take time to show you how to make your own in another tutorial but I picked this one um, interesting enough this has got this is made out of like board slats so I'm gonna select that okay and as you look at that see I like this because you know wood has knots and stuff like that so first thing is you're looking at this is you gotta recognize that you're gonna have to be able to reposition the actual texture so you got just like up here when we use stencils I could use this this arrow key to go back and forth okay and uh, I can zoom in or out okay and I actually want to zoom um, in some or out some I want my uh, my boards to look bigger than they actually are that way the the grain will not cover the items okay so now I'm gonna select the body by itself so that'll be in my Vox tree over here and I've labeled all these in the last time I did the video so that's important now if I click on the the uh, and I noticed this too it doesn't actually disappear until I go over here but what I want to do is bring that back I'm gonna alt click on it and so now just the body is in here so that's just the body okay so now I'm gonna go up here and move my texture so that it looks good for the one I'm dealing with now it looks like I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit because I'm still getting that darkness in there okay there we go so now and there's there's different boards in this particular pattern so you're gonna pick the one you like with the grain now I like that I like that a lot it's got a lot of character and it's uh, probably a little bigger than what um, uh, you normally wouldn't see those big streaky marks so I go over here and I say fill whole layer and it's only going to fill the layer that's visible so now if I go over here I right click and I show all the hidden volumes and I shrink this just the body is changed in this one okay so that looks good um, for the body that's not bad um, there's some things I, I could change about it but I'm not gonna make a big deal about it because I want this video to be simple for you so there we go with that um, now we're gonna all you're gonna do is continue to go through this and select a part at a time so now let's go to the rockers and let's highlight those alone okay there they are let's get our preview panel back down there now you can tell real quickly that the grain is going the wrong direction so we need to turn this grain so that it goes we don't want it to go up and down but we want it to go straight across but at the same time um, we want it to be in the way that a carpenter would have selected this 
Okay, let me go this direction with this and bring this up here and see what we got. A little bit more of a turn. Mm, right about there. Pan that up and over. And I'm liking that. Okay, now my grain's going that way. So I'm going to fill the whole layer. And if I go again over here and I show all the volumes, just the body and the rockers have been done. Okay. Again, now we got to go by here and let's do the stand this time. So we're going to control, click on the eye. That's how you, uh, you isolate just the item you want in this particular one because it's connected to a couple other things. Um, and that should be it. Let me see. Yeah, I have to leave the rocker up there. So what I do is I, I turn it to uh, semi-transparent and I believe that that will um, cause them not to be affected. All right. So now let me do a top view on this because that will be the easiest way to get the grain the way I want it. I want the grain to go up and down. Um, so let me see if I just turn it this way first. Okay, there we go. And that's... Uh, in the direction I want it. So just fill the whole layer. And those are done. Okay. So I could turn those off. And instead of bringing up everything like I was, I'm going to just go through here. The body's already done. The saddle's going to be totally different material. Let's go to the back legs. Go to the side view. Let's play with the direction on this so we can get these to kind of want them to go kind of the length of the leg. And that looks about right. There we go. It's not too bad. All right. And fill whole layer. And so the legs are done. And this is just too easy in my opinion. All right. So that was the back leg. Now we need to do the front leg. Front leg is going to almost look like the back leg with, with it just going the opposite direction. And again, you're just moving your mouse on that curve tool till you see the grain the way you want it to be. Once you get it where you're happy, and you can you can scale it differently on the different parts if you wanted to, but for what I'm doing, I prefer the wood grain to kind of look similar. Fill the whole layer. That was the front leg. Let's do the head. The head is uh, almost the same as the body, but I wanted to um, I wanted to do it separately because I'm thinking I want a, a slight slight angle. Let's go back to that one right there. Uh, right there and I think down. Yeah, right in there. I like that grain. Okay, but I want to tilt it more. See how I got that line, that, that dark line? That's the angle I want this grain to kind of go at. So let's get that there. We don't want to screw in it. <laughs> I think I, I think I used a palette grain. This is looking pretty good, right there. All right, apply the whole layer. Boom, and that's that. The main, the handle, the handles. We're gonna paint those. The eyes. We're gonna paint those. Okay. So for the moment, let's do a show all hidden layers. Let's hide this. And see there we are with our wood grain um, even though I show I have all my layers showed the rockers were still semi-transparent okay now I have to choose different materials for the other parts okay because obviously I want the saddle to look like it's made out of leather and I want I'm gonna make the main look like painted wood rather than just wood wood and give it a little bit of color uh, same thing with the handle it's gonna be painted and the eye will be painted Okay, so let me go over here to paints for the moment. I don't think there's anything in here I really like, but let's preview this one. And let's just look at it on the saddle. So, and that should be in a moment, should switch over. There we go. All right, 
and as you can see in this model there's there's like some transparent parts okay and those are programmed in the way that this is set so obviously on my saddle that doesn't work real good so what I like for this particular one is actually the default I actually like this uh, this this plastic but it's a little glossy I could go up here and turn the gloss down okay or I could turn the gloss off see now that's looking pretty good um, and um, we can go over here and, and turn off uh, or I mean um, adjust the uh, the depth of the texture now there's not much texture in this one because it is plastic but we could adjust it let me just see if I can get this bigger so we can kind of see a little better what we're doing okay and that's a that's not too bad well let's look at these uh, cloth for a second fabrics okay this one I can't remember which ones are in there and we have denim let's go to leather I think there's a nice leather in here this is plastic glossy that's interesting plastic glossy <laughs> and so if we go over here to this one yes if you see this you want to do this because it'll bring out the full effect that they've programmed this for and um, this is kind of nice because it um, it's got some grain to it but obviously it's it's too big I need to kind of get it down to and I think it's too rough so we want to uh, not turn it off but we want to we want to make the depth even lower than what it is that's not too bad um, wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of shine on leather let's take it up some about, say about 20 all right and you right click on this it'll take the color off okay so now that's using that in the way it's set with those settings so if I go over here and I do a um, smart material editor before I do that because it changes things this is plastic glossy I'm going to duplicate it so now I have two of these okay and so I'm going to click on the second one I'm going to right click whoops didn't mean to duplicate it again but I did okay smart material editor and this is going to be plastic glossy we're going to call it a copy for now we can name it something specific when we're done but for right now that's going to be it I wanted more of a red red and so I'm going to go up here and say okay to that that's actually looking more like what I want this is the uh, patterns that are already set in here you hold your mouse over them, you actually get to see the pictures that are chosen this is where you can put in your own textures okay I want to go to this one here and I'm gonna see if I can take this one down what happens and okay all right okay so when the opacity is lowered it, it makes it a lot more realistic looking as far as a cloth um, not so washed out um, I also want um, I want to deal with the depth of this texture more there we are I want this texture to just be real there we go I like that and so we're saving that that's my copy okay and all right so there that's that here's the original one before I modified it here's the new one with the red in it and I like it so we're going to fill the whole layer and then that's done okay now we need to um, go to the um, we'll look at the whole thing later but for right now let's look at the tail let's get that saddle off of there alrighty so let's go to the tail there's three parts to our tail and we might as well do the main at the same time they're going to be all the same color anyways alrighty so looking at them they look okay there with the red but I don't want red I want uh, I want to go to default and I'm gonna go to the plastic shabby and I'm not really liking that I think it has to do with um, the opacity settings no maybe it's the gloss intensity 
I'm not really liking the way that the edges are on that. So let me let me go to old school paint. Let me duplicate this. And let me go in here and, and edit this. And let's make this, uh, I want a black. And let's say OK on that. Um, I want this shiny. I want the roughness down because I want it shiny. So take that down. Hmm. Let's try that for the moment. Yeah. I can tell by the front when it looks really good. Fill the whole layer. And you can see that's just a nice glossy black. To make a nice uh image for the horse. Uh, so alrighty. So for right now that's where we're at. The only things we gotta do is um the handles. It's uh it's in a preview mode because of this. Just so you understand, you just click the thumbtack and uh, it goes away. But there's our horse so far. We gotta fix this handle and fix the the eye. And there's a couple different ways we could do that. We could stay in the smart things, but you really don't need that for this. Let's go ahead and grab the handle. Go over here to fill. And I'm thinking, I don't know, I just like in the reds. Um, so let's stay in the red. And let's um, let's fill it. No, I, I looks like it went black. So Control Z that. Let's go back over here. There it goes. Okay. So now it filled it with the color. Okay. Let's give the horse a blue eye. I'm a little bit colorblind, so if that's not quite blue, I do apologize. There we go. I actually, when I need to know that my colors are right, I actually look up the numbers to verify them. Okay. Now you can see down here on this texture, I actually have um, a little bit of the the slat in between. I'm going to leave it for now, but I just want you to know that you could go back and fix that. Alrighty, let's go to our render spot and let's bring it in, back it up a little. Let's click render right now. It looks dark. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah, no, that's rendering out real nice. So there you have it. Other than um, this little bit of a blem right here, um, you've got um, your model rendered. And I wanted again, like I said, to do a, a nice quick video to get back into doing this with you. I'm loving the texture on the saddle, liking the gloss on the mane and the tail. Um, play around with this stuff. You're going to enjoy this. Now, we'll get a little more in-depth in this because there is so much power in this. It's incredible. Now, one of the things I want you all to be aware of is that um, the... The company that makes this, and their name is, is slipping me, and there it is, Pilgway, um, is an awesome company. And um, they are on top of improving and advancing this software so fast, it seems that you might watch this video, and within 30 days, they'll have improved something and sort of make the tutorial obsolete. I'll try to be aware of that, and as I see changes, mention them in the in the videos to come. But just know that there will be a way to go back to whatever it is that we're showing you. Um, now, when you're in here, you can um, you can actually uh, save the uh, the horse where you want it. You just click over here, um, and then you choose um, a name for it. Okay, so this will be Hobby Horse. You change the format that you want it to be, whether you want it to be a JPEG or a PNG, you save it. And then once you once you render, that actual angle that you're looking at right now is also being saved as an image. You can press space to get out of this quickly or escape, and that'll take you back to here. Well, there you have it. Um, post some of your samples. Love to see what you do with the rendering. I think this is awesome. 
Um, I in no way was ever able to get this far this fast with any of the other softwares out there. I've used most of them. Blender, Maya, uh, I've demoed the ones that I didn't want to buy. This one here is well worth the uh, <laughs> we're gonna be fine this one is well worth the investment thank you again you all have a great day and we'll look forward to uh, sending you out another video hopefully in a week or so thank you again bye bye <music>